Welcome to Why Engineering at the National Building Museum. This program is generously supported by the United Engineering Foundation. Hi, my name is Yunitsa. So, um, ever wonder why buildings uh, don't fall down? Ever wonder how the air conditioners in our homes work? Ever wonder why skyscrapers are so tall? So, in this program, we're going to look at how solutions to these problems are um, developed. So, to begin with, let's look at an introduction of the National Building Museum. It began with an idea to create a national home for the building arts and sciences, and at the same time, save an architectural treasure. This idea led to the founding of the National Building Museum in 1980. The National Building Museum is America's leading cultural institution devoted to the history and impact of our built environment. Fitting to its mission, the museum is housed in one of the most impressive buildings in America, featuring interior columns among the largest in the world. Here, visitors of all ages take part in exhibitions, public programs, and festivals, experiencing the wonder of architecture, design, engineering, construction, and landscape architecture, the industries that create our cities and communities. The museum is a forum for public conversation on critical challenges like sustainability, disaster resilience, affordable housing, and historic preservation. The National Building Museum, the place where ideas are born. So as you just saw, National Building Museum, our mission is to inspire curiosity about the world we design and build. So in other words, the places where we work, play, and live in. So a lot of that has to do with working collaboratively, in other words, in teams. Now, to get started, we're going to go ahead and talk a little bit about how we're going to interact in this program. You can see me, but I can't see you. Yet, we will be able to talk to each other through the chat feature. So on your screen, you're going to find either at the top or the bottom that there's a, a button that says chat. That's where you would be able, there's going to be questions throughout. And I hope that you will be actively engaged and answer in that chat feature. If there's a question that you want to answer later on, go ahead and put it in the Q&A because we'll have time at the end of the program. So the other thing is remember to put your name on at the end of uh, your comment sort of quickly so that we get a sense of who's saying what. Um, but now we're going to go ahead and move into talking about building. What kind of jobs um, are you making buildings? And go ahead and chat. So what jobs do you think are involved in the making of buildings? Um, yes, architects and builders, says Allison's. Engineering, architecture, math, construction, landscaping. Good. Um, any other thoughts? This is also a good time for you to mention um, where you're joining us from. So, a backhoe operator. Inventing? Yes. So, I see Karen and Sarah. And Allison from DC, can you tell us a little bit? We have Charlevoix, Michigan, fifth grade. Good. And who else do we have on here? Welcome. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and move on. So in this program, yes, you mentioned some of the people that are you mentioned some of the people that work on buildings, like landscapers and uh, architects and engineers and, um, work and construction workers. Um, we also have a sixth grade class from Virginia. Uh, electricians was one of the ones that's come up. But we're gonna go ahead and look at um, focus on engineers. In order to focus on engineers, we're going to look at our goals for today. So today, we will, as you can go ahead and read along on the slide, today we will learn about engineering and its disciplines with an emphasis on real life applications. We're gonna get a behind the scenes look into the work of engineers with an emphasis on projects in Washington, DC. 
and we're going to engage in several quick challenges using the engineering design process. Now, as we look at engineers, can you tell me what your engineer is? Let's look at the chat. We have someone for Hartford County, Maryland as well. So what do you think an engineer is? What do they do? Maybe one of your parents is an engineer. Okay, so I have a, a designer or a tinker or someone how someone who builds or designs a thinker a thinker not a tinker good job okay so um what else do you think an engineer is a person who designs buildings says karen yes they can do so many things they can work with buildings computers medicine excellent allison okay so we have a uh, one more maybe they create ideas, says Sarah. Yes. So we're going to go ahead and sort to paraphrase. An engineer is a person who designs and builds complex products, machines, systems, or structures. Engineers want to know how and why things work. That's really important. So we're going to go ahead and look at engineering because there are many types of engineers. And as we can see in this bubble diagram, you have engineering as the main discipline, and then there's four smaller disciplines, things like chemical engineering, electrical, civil, mechanical, and then those have other components. So within civil, you'll find things like structural or environmental, um, where then go on and move into what engineers work on. So for example, civil engineers design roads, bridges, and buildings, or um, mechanical engineers design machines that use force and motion. And, um, Chemical engineers design and improve chemicals and materials to create new products. So these are just a few of the options. There's like 25 possible options. So we're going to go find that we're going to have a series of videos. And these videos are going to give you a glimpse into the life of an engineer. And we're going to go ahead and get started with Dave from USP, uh, who's going to be at the Smithsonian's National Museum of African American History and Culture in Washington, D.C. I'm Dave Nichols. I work with WSP, and I'm an engineer in charge of commissioning, which is making sure the building works at the end of the project. From the time I was a little kid, I loved to take things apart and see why things do what they do. And the, the more I looked at it, the more that I thought that the engineering is all about solving problems, and that's what, that's what really pushed, sparked my interest. I started on the field to, to into engineering almost by accident. The first thing I did as an adult was join the Navy. And then when I left the Navy, uh, there was an opportunity to go back to school and learn something new. And dirt, while I was in the Navy, I was solving problems, but now I could apply to what I really wanted to do, and that was buildings. The main skills you need to be an, a, a really good engineer are you have to have a logical thought process. You need to ask a lot of questions. Always ask questions. Why is this this way? And then how do I get from why is it this way to how do I make it the way I want it? And the, the, the process, it's all about the process. So you have to be organized and you have to be an inquisitive person. One of the things that I wish that I had paid more attention to when I was in school was art. Because engineers love things that work, but we also are putting these things that work into something that somebody wants to look beautiful. And just because it works very well doesn't mean it's necessarily beautiful. So today we're at the National Museum of African American History and Culture in Washington, D.C. Um, this is a really cool project. It's, it won a whole bunch of awards, but the coolest thing about it is the effort and the different phases that went into this. So first thing, of course, was design. And the design, the whole team, a lot of people, 50, 60 engineers in total probably, uh, worked on the design for five years before the first shovel ever hit the ground here. Where we're standing right now is 
uh, a little over 50 feet below grade. In Washington, D.C., that means we're below water since D.C. sits on a very, it's almost in a swamp. So we worked with the architect who didn't want to see my beautiful equipment up in the building uh, to find a way to fit all of that below the ground. Uh, to do that, the build, we had to keep the water out of the building, keep the river away from the building. So we worked with, um, we worked with civil engineers, we worked with geotechnical engineers, um, architects, we worked with the uh, city to make sure that we weren't going to ruin any of their uh, infrastructure, and then the building goes up from there. But all the way through, everything an engineer does has to be coordinated with somebody. If it's the owner to make sure they get what they want, it might be the architect to make sure that it looks the way they want, um, and, then, and then it's the people that have to maintain the building. The best thing about being an engineer is being able to drive around town and point to buildings and say, that one's mine, and that one's mine, and that one's mine. And then you think about all the cool things that it took before people actually used the building. I hope that this has piqued your interest or at least made you wonder more about what engineers do. And if that if you are a person that is interested and likes to solve problems, it's very likely that you could be a successful engineer. So thank you for spending some time with us today. Now, it was really cool to be able to look at a completed project behind the scenes. Now, Engineers work on a lot of different types of projects, but what they do have in common is that they use a common design process, which Dave started to mention. Now, this engineering design process has several steps, and we're going to review what those steps are. So, an engineer, when they approach a project, they always look at how you define a problem. You always have to have some sort of problem, something that you're trying to solve, something that is a challenge uh, in the project that you're working on. In this case, we're looking at buildings. Um, then, after you've determined what the problem is, um, you're going to have an opportunity to investigate. And this is really important. You don't want to skip steps. The idea is that here's a problem, find out what happens, what has already been solved, what are different ways of approaching it, what is the information you need in order for you to be able to be ready to generate ideas. And as I mentioned, engineers often work collaboratively. So they're in teams. So this, this is a really good opportunity to just brainstorm. And there are no bad ideas. The idea is just to throw ideas out there and try to see which ones seem to fit better with the problem that you're trying to solve. Once that has been narrowed down, you would move into planning. And at this point, it's much more tangible. Here it was a little bit more abstract because it wasn't very specific. While here it's a lot more concrete because you know exactly what you're going to be working towards. That's going to allow you to produce a solution. And the idea is that you've gone through this process, you had a problem, you took some steps, and now you're at a solution. The important part, though, is, which sometimes gets skipped, is that you should evaluate. And the idea is that after you've created a solution, you may find that it didn't work and you have to start the process all over again. Engineers specifically usually use, uh, they create prototypes. And a prototype is like a model where they look at, okay, let's look at our finished product. Let's look at what it is before we actually build it. Um, so we're going to go ahead and think about, you probably are already using some variation of this process in your own life. So in the chat feature, I want you to go ahead and tell me, how do you think you have used this design process? So any thoughts? Think about your everyday life or think about your day in school or your parents' jobs or when do you think that this, okay, that this uh, process is being used? So Sarah mentions when you're writing your argument essays in your English language arts class, absolutely. For any school reports, when you plan almost anything, fireworks. Okay, you use this for fireworks? Could you elaborate? Building a birdhouse. Yes, to build a birdhouse, that makes sense because your uh, critical thinking is important when I work on machines, inventing. 
So yes, a lot of things that you're already doing do incorporate the design process, designing. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and move on and we're going to use the design process in a quick challenge. Now, what we would like to do is if you could just quickly grab a piece of paper and a pen, that would be great, um, or a pencil, that sort of thing. We're gonna do a quick challenge and you're gonna think Preferably turn to someone next to you. It could be another student, it could be a parent or a sibling, or it could just be you on your own. But the idea is that I want you to come up with a list of how many different uses can you think about uh, a can. So you're gonna go ahead, just make a list. No idea is a bad idea. In the chat feature, you're going to give me some examples of what you could do to turn this can into something else. Um, and as you're writing it in, uh, don't repeat what you've already heard. So just try to come up with a few answers. We're only gonna do this for like a minute or two. So grab some pencil and paper and we're gonna go ahead and start looking at the chat in a few seconds. So a popcorn popper. So you could use this as a popcorn popper. What else could you do? A hockey puck. Okay, you could use this as a hockey puck. A bow, money holder. Tell me about some of the ways you would transform it. How do you turn it into, you can make a fly, just in a fly, cut ends off. Yes, cutting the ends off in a safe way would be one option. Thank you, Jack. Any other things you think you can do? Think about the shape. So it could be something as simple as if you remove the top, what do you end up with? What could you do with that? A cat toy, okay? And a paperweight, definitely a paperweight. A note holder, telescope, flatten it, yes. So if you flatten it, what can you make with it? Jack. You can turn it into a butane stove by putting holes in it and using a cigarette lighter. That is very resourceful, Karen. I'll do that next time I'm camping. But um, visor, pencil cup, very good. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and move on. As you can see, these are great answers, um, but we're gonna look at how engineers use the design process. So in this case, we're gonna look at the different steps that they use in an engineering fir firm where we're going to go ahead and look at Elena. My name is Elena Honda. I'm a mechanical engineer at Canon Design. What sparked my interest in engineering was really outer space. As a kid, I had a teacher who told me all about black holes and how no one had ever traveled to one before. And that became my focus for many years, was to build a spaceship that could take us to a black hole. And as I got older, I realized that I just really liked the problem-solving aspect of engineering and it could apply to anything that I wanted to do. I think the two biggest skills to become an engineer are problem solving and communication skills. I use those every single day and with HVAC engineering, it really changes every project. So you will have to come up with a new solution and you will always have to be communicating with everyone around you. The other part that I think is really important is curiosity because if you're not curious about your projects and what you're doing, you're not gonna have better solutions and you're not gonna grow. The most rewarding aspect of this job is the collaboration. As an engineer, you can really become single-minded and really focus on just the engineering, but here I interact with architects, I interact with graphic designers, I interact with electrical engineers, and it's very important that I have that communication and that I have the projects that are very interdisciplinary rather than just mechanical. Hello, my name is Roberto Cruz Nimic. I'm an architect. I've been an architect for the last 26 years. Um, I've done everything in my career, designing, doing technical documentation, and doing more project management. Right now with Canon Design, I do the operations for the office. So I do all the staffing and coordination between the teams. I typically work on very large projects where we have large teams and an immense amount of co collaboration between engineers, architects, um, master planners, cost estimating, and the construction team. The good thing about having the engineers in the office is that we work closely together through the design process. From the first day of the project, we're working with the engineers to develop the basic system strategies 
and how the project will work in terms of mechanical systems, electrical systems, and plumbing systems. All projects are going to require a design aspect where we use some modeling software and it's going to give you these very beautiful images of just exactly what you need to put into a building. From there you're going to go into construction and you're going to go on site, you're going to see all the equipment you're putting in and you're also going to see what the contractors are going to be purchasing. And then after that, as the building is being constructed, you will constantly be involved looking at everything going inside. Um, and at the very end, there's something very important to our field right now, and that's the environment. And so we do like to track how our buildings are doing several years after they're done, just to make sure we're hitting every energy code we can. As you can see, it takes more than just an engineer to make a building work. And so thank you for coming to Canon Design, and I hope that you continue to wonder. Okay, so that made me want to work as an engineer. So now we're going to try another activity. I'm going to show you a demo. You may or may not have some newspaper or paper available, but if you do, go grab some newspaper, or uh, it can be copy paper, or if you happen to already have tape, that would be great. But if not, we're going to do an activity where I'm going to quickly introduce you to a project that you can do, either start now and continue after the program, or just start it after the program. But the idea is that we're going to use something that is easily accessible to look at engineering principles. So in this case, we are going to look at how you can use rolled paper. And rolled paper is cool because you're basically just using newspaper or regular paper, and you're going to roll it to give you a, a building element. And in that case, you can use that building element to create something. In this case, we're looking at the Eiffel Tower, because it's something that most people are uh, familiar with. And just using these, that we were able to create a form. Now, your goal is going to be to create the tallest tower that you can make using just tape and uh, rolled paper. The other thing when you're doing this is to think about what shapes you're going to do. So first, you're going to start with this. If you take the paper, put it at an angle, because what you want to do is catch the corner. It's going to take a lot of practice. I'm still practicing a lot. So the idea is you start folding it, squish it a little, because you want to make it as tight as you can. So you're going to go ahead and take your paper, or watch us with our paper, and you're going to roll. So just keep rolling. And the easiest thing to do is, once you've got it rolling, it will be much easier on the table to start rolling it out more. The only thing is that you do it slower than I am doing it now so that it can be a little tighter. But do you see how easily it was then once you're on the table to move it over? And then you take a little piece of paper, tape, to put on the paper to close it. Now, the interesting thing about this is that you don't even need to stop at a tabletop size. You can make it taller. In some cases, I've seen it where they created an actual fort, especially for some of the younger uh, students, where you get to make a little play tent. So you're gonna take these, and you're gonna be able to put them together in different ways. One is you could just go ahead and use tape to create your corners. You wanna think about that in the same way as the Eiffel Tower being a strong base. You wanna start with a big base and then go higher, which is what skyscrapers do. They get much smaller as they get to the top. Now, one of the things that you can see is that although they use squares, as you get higher, triangles work better because when you look at shapes, you have a square, which as you can see can wobble. But when you have a shape like triangles, which you can also see in the trusses of the building museum behind us, it's a lot stronger. So what a lot of um, engineers do is that when they're trying to do something stronger, they'll use more triangles. In fact, you can look at Buckminster Fuller, um, F-U-L-L-E-R, who is known for his geodesic domes. And this is pretty similar to what he did, but basically it was the idea that you can use all these triangles to create a really strong shape. So you would end up playing with this until you make them figure out different connections. The other thing that sometimes works is that instead of having a connection like this, if you fold, then you're already making it stronger because you don't have as many loose pieces to work with. But what we want you to do is try this out, play with it in different ways, and then 
after the program, uh, we'd like to see some of your solutions because I can't see them right now. So we'd love for you to go ahead and post it if you can on Instagram or Twitter. And we're adding our social media handles so that you can consider sending us a picture. But remember, you have to put hashtag NBM distance learning. And in fact, we'll take a look at them and we may be able to feature some of them on our own social media feed. So I'm sure that you're going to find a lot of uh, solutions to these different kinds of problems, but now we're going to go ahead and look at Walid, who is at FKNA, and he's at a construction site of the new International Spy Museum in Washington, D.C. I'm Walid Chueri. I'm a structural principal in charge with SKNA Structural Engineers, and I'm going to talk about the structural engineering of the Spy Museum today. Um, you know, I've been a structural engineer for 18 years now. Um, initially, uh, I got my interest in engineering sparked through really my father, who was a contractor. Um, and I, through my childhood and, and uh, high school, I always kind of worked kind of part time in the summers on job sites and always wanted to get into the construction industry, just didn't know how. So as I got into you know, my undergraduate studies, uh, which was at the American University of Beirut, I knew that I was going to get into a field of engineering. And that led to the need to get further education, and that's when I did my master's degree at George Washington University here in Washington, D.C. Hi, I'm, I'm Dan with SKNA Structural Engineers. I, I was a structural engineer on the Spy Museum project. I've always been um, very uh, interested in how things work and how they're put together. I've always liked the rector set, Lego, as I was young, and um, always kind of knew that I was inclined to uh, study math and science. I always got more excited in school, um, in, in math class and science class, doing experiments, learning how things work. Um, so I, I just kind of knew that, uh, that engineering was a, a course for me. Hi, I'm Brian Chun. I'm with Hickok Cole Architects. We are the architect of record for the Spy Museum. Um, the Spy Museum is a very exciting project. In my opinion, it is the most exciting building in all of DC. The building design is inspired by spycraft. Think about spies. There's cryptography, there's code breaking, there's all of this stuff, this analysis that happens inside the CIA, inside the NSA. You don't get to see any of that. So the big black thing on the right side, we call that the black box. That's what represents the cryptography side of spycraft. The other side of spycraft is just being hidden in plain sight. It might be two guys on a park bench exchanging nuclear launch codes or something. I mean, obviously, that's from a movie. But this hidden in plain sight aspect of spycraft is represented by the glass on my left side here. This is the veil. Here's a great example, a great specific example of architects and engineers working together. We have a 65-foot tall piece of glass. Well, you know, there's rainstorms, there's windstorms. Every now and then we get a hurricane. The wind pushes against the glass. If I had a 65-foot tall piece of glass with nothing supporting it, the glass would break. So what we need are a series of elements that take the structural load from the wind back to the building. So what we're looking at here are a series of Ys. The yellow elements are the structural stringers. The red elements are the structural columns that we see behind us. And believe it or not, everything is hanging from the very tips like a whole series of yo-yos. So I'm not saying jump up and down and bounce around, but that is effectively the type of structural support we have here. If you like Minecraft, if you like 3D modeling, if you like creating virtual spaces, this is the job for you. We're standing in an atrium with a, with a feature stair that, that was completed all in a three-dimensional BIM model. The BIM model, the building information model, is a three-dimensional computer model that we create that we make sure all the pieces come together, all the pieces are the right size, all the structural members will take the adequate loads that we need them in order to perform over the life of the building. Hi, I'm Jeff Guy with Clark Construction. Uh, what I do is, uh, uh, I'm a different kind of engineer, so uh, where Dan and Waleed design the building, uh, my primary job is to break that building down into a lot of smaller different parts that we can easily assemble, put together, and then set in place uh, to build the building. The thing that interested me in becoming an engineer was, uh, uh, was trying to figure out how things work by taking them apart, 
uh, figuring out the parts that were inside of it, uh, and then figuring out if I put it back together, missing a certain part or adding a certain part or doing it a different way, whether it would still work or not. This atrium area uh, is one of the more challenging parts of the project. Uh, it combines a lot of uh, you know, different architectural designs and, and structural challenges to try to achieve them. Uh, the platform I'm standing on, as well as some of the stairways and, and this veil skin structure is really hu mostly hung from um, the structure above us. And there's a lot of coordination and effort to get the analysis design and then construction uh, uh, of that, uh, this structure um, completed. And um, as such, you know, kind of we nicknamed it like a, the jungle gym of the project just because of the, the complexity of, of all the connections and the hanging structure. The most rewarding thing, I mean, working in structural engineering or the field in general, is probably seeing a completed product and knowing that you've had some input and some uh, uh, collaboration in getting that completed product done. Uh, it's, you know, not too many fields ha have a visual completed product that you can drive by every day. So. I'm glad I was able to speak to you today and uh, hopefully you got a little glimpse into the world of construction and structural engineering and uh, hopefully it may have sparked of interest in some of you that are more inclined to, you know, liking some, a career along these lines or, or you're, you know, good in math and, and uh, science and don't, not sure where to go. Engineering is always a great field to get into. So I think it's interesting to see how engineers are always wondering how things work. So I want you to think like an engineer. And after seeing these interviews, can you tell me a little bit about what kinds of things you're wondering about right now? And it could be anything. The point is to show that you have some curiosity. So go into the chat and go ahead and write something. What are you wondering about now? What do you think about how something works? Any thoughts? How long does it usually take to build a project? That's something you're beginning to wonder. So for example, when we saw the National Museum of African American History and Culture, in that case, that building, they worked on it for five years before the first shovel went on. How did the design process might work in the field? So you're starting to think about how it actually gets applied. And the good thing about the videos was that it started to show you, here are the different steps that it took and all the different people that were involved in getting to a finished project. How many times do people usually have to change or alter their design? So yes, um, it's a constant process. So they're using this and they're turning uh, back and forth, going to the same problem, evaluating. So it usually takes a lot of different steps and iterations before they get just the right ones. You're wondering how cars work. Yes, it makes you take a little closer look, look around your room, look at on your classroom or your home and think about all the things that you take for granted and how do they work? Because someone had to figure it out whether it was a computer or a roller coaster or um, bridges that you cross every day. Now, where do some of the things you're wondering are things like what kind of safety experts do engineers work and how do electrical cords work? Yes, because the electricity has to get into your house and that's a lot of what electrical engineers do. Okay, so then these are all really good answers. One of the good things about um, engineering is that nowadays there's an explosion of STEAM. And STEAM refers to STEM, which you know as science, technology, engineering, and math, but we add an A for art, so STEAM. And the idea is that if you look at the explosion of STEAM, there's so many career choices where you can think creatively. And engineering is just one of them, but you don't have to make a decision right now. In the meantime, you can go ahead and explore different ways to learn about engineering. So, for example, let's look at ways that you already are thinking about how you take things apart and you put them together and you reinvent them for a new use. And one of the most uh, obvious choices for something like that would be um, building toys. 
So we're going to go ahead and do a quick little poll. And I've selected four common uh, building toys that you may be familiar with one or two or none or some uh, are going to be all of them. And tell me which one is your favorite of these four. Oh, someone already said Legos, but go ahead and make sure you enter a response so that we can go ahead and see the poll. So what is your favorite building toy? A, Legos, B, Tinker Toys, C, Erector Sets or Meccano, and D, Kinetics. So far we have three. Oh, we have two more actually. And can we get the last ones? Come on, just one more. Let's see. Do we have a full one? Here are our results. Our poll results are Number one is Legos. Who doesn't like Legos? They're fun. But you should also explore some of the other ones because if you walk down the aisles, you're going to find that, um, that there's a lot of other options. But 100% of you said that Legos were your number one choice. Um, so expand. But that's a good way to go. So now I want to know in the chat feature, we've come out of the poll, and I want to know in the chat feature, what are other ways that you can learn about engineering after today? What are things that you can do to learn more? Let's look in the chat. You're gonna read, watch a YouTube video, definitely. That was a lot of what I would look at. Uh, research from the internet, what else can you do? You're gonna build models, maybe using different types of building systems. Iria, are you gonna read? I read, maybe? Idea? You're gonna find YouTube, practice different activities? Yes, nowadays one of the great things about YouTube is you have access to all these activities similar to the ones we've done today. And they're just quick demos of what you can do. You're gonna to talk to engineers and make things. You probably already know quite a few engineers if you go and look at your friends' families. Oh, you're gonna read, yes. Thanks, Krissa. And are there a few more things? Design, use the process, ask around, read, look it up. So yes, now you're gonna be more conscious of how the design process works and apply it to what you do in school or even how you solve problems um, at home. So you're gonna look around your apartment, and you're gonna think about the engineering that went into building it. That's really good. Hands-on learning, such as building problems. Look for problems in my world or the third world and try to come up with something. Yes, that's what a lot of engineers do is that they're looking around them. One of the growing fields is environmental engineering because they're looking at issues like global warming and waste and how to like use the resources that we have in, on Earth. So um, that's making engineering expand even further as we face a lot more problems that need to be solved. You're going to be drawing pictures more. Yes, because as Dave said, art was the one area that he wishes he had spent a little bit more time on. Now, there's lots of different things also that you can do. So as, um, as it had been mentioned, reading is a good way to do it. Like books such as Rosie Revere, The Engineer, or go to your library. There's a lot of books nowadays that are looking at building trades. Um, it could be through reading. It could be through looking at apps. Minecraft is something very popular that some of you may already be using. Um, the other thing is maybe there's a Lego robotic class that you decide to join. But the point is there's so much you can do out there to sort of look at engineering principles, which you've already been doing all along. So now would be a good opportunity for you to let me know in the Q&A or in the chat, what are some other questions that still remain after completing this project program? Let's see, in the Q&A, someone had mentioned, uh, how can I become an engineer? Are there classes or areas that I should focus on? So by looking at the videos, you have more of a sense. One of the things that's very popular is that people want to have the opportunity to hear about engineers from engineers. And this allows you to look at, okay, it's, it's a long process. 
in, get inspired now. Just be curious. Go look at how the world works. When you get to college, then yes, you would have engineering programs that are available. Most nowadays, almost everyone has to move into advanced degrees, especially as you specialize in specific things. And then um, the question went away. And then definitely focus on things like math and science and art, because these are areas that you can easily translate into engineering. Um, another question was, in what ways can I combine my interest in art and engineering? The good thing is that you can look at lots of other fields as well. So one of the things that I found that a way of combining art and engineering was looking at other design fields. Like industrial design is very similar to engineering, but you're incorporating more of the art because you're looking at how objects look, not only how they work. Um, so go ahead and research different things that you can look into, but you still have time. Um, so if engineering was not widely known, what is one word that would sum it up? I'd like you to think about what it what that one word would be. Um, but in the research that I've looked at so far, I would say that, in my opinion, one word would be thinkers. They're thinkers. They think about problems. They think about solutions. They think about how to make the world better, how to make their environment better. Um, are video games part of engineering? Absolutely. So someone had to think about, Here's a video game that I want to create. What's the problem? What's the scenario? How do I solve it? It also gets you to use critical thinking. So don't overdo it, but keep playing with uh, video games and look at maybe some of them that are more STEAM oriented. Cool, yes. Okay, any more questions? We have like another 30 seconds. Let me go ahead and look in the chat to see if there's any that were placed there. Um, okay, I'm back. Let's see. In the chat, it mentions, are there internships for high school students to experience engineering fields so I can determine if I would like to go into it? Yes, there's definitely uh, a lot of programs out there. Um, some of them is through after school programs because they are trying to move students into more science uh, and engineering fields. The other thing is even looking as you get older, there's pre-college programs at different um, colleges where you can look at a summer where you're looking at engineering courses. So um, there's lots of opportunities for you to not have to make a decision right away, but to still be able to nurture the idea that I think this may be something I'm interested in. What are the next steps that I need to look at? Museums are also a really good resource. So even something as simple as the next time you're in Washington, DC, come and see our museum. And um, we'll be able to learn more about engineering as well as other building trades. So. So Krista wants to know, are these the rules for inventing, the ones that we put on the board? Um, yes, these are different ways. It's called the engineering design process, but basically it's just different ways that different, not only engineers are using. Engineers are using, uh, designers are using, uh, everyday people are using. But you can look up, more, look up more details online if you Google design process. Now, um, our program's over. So we are going to thank you for joining us at Y Engineering at the National Building Museum. Before you go, though, we would like to have some feedback. So I'd like you to do the last thing. In the chat feature, I want to mention the idea of having two stars and a wish, which you may be familiar with from school. But tell me one or two things that you liked, enjoyed, learned. And then tell me one thing that you think we could have done better or you wished we had done or um, are more curious about. Um, and in fact, some of the parents and educators will uh, be contacted after the program for a short interview as we're trying to evaluate how this program is going. Now, if you could go into the chat so that I can read a few of your responses. I see in the Q&A, those are done, but in the chat, what did you like? What um, could we do better? Um, any feedback would be helpful. Mm. 
Any thoughts? Everything and nothing. So you loved everything and you would change nothing? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Thank you, Tristan. Um, you liked hearing from real engineers? Absolutely, that was really fun. Um, so you wish there were more uh, ex experiments and you liked the, idea, the videos with the particular people? Yeah, I definitely like the uh, videos with particular people and we're gonna continue to look at how we can elaborate on more of the activities. So keep an eye out for more programs. I, okay, so yes, in terms of the materials ahead of time, um, like we're gonna go ahead and uh, sign you up so that you see more of that beforehand. Um, but thank you for the feedback. You like the making the rolled up paper, that's great. And you're gonna go home and do some more, right? More homeschool programs, a better microphone. Okay, now I know that uh, you need to hear a little bit better. Okay, well, thank you very much. Um, I, there are some people that we'd like to give some special thanks to, and in particular, the United Engineering Foundation, because they were, um, they generously support our programs, and then there are several other organizations that participated in the creation of this program. So, thank you, and goodbye.